I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, Six Pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Hey, this is Matt. Once again, welcome back to another review. There's another paid request this time from Jose Ballard. Thank you so much. For those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, feel free to send them either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for the Pineapple Express. It came out in 2008. It is a stoner comedy mixed in with an action film, which I thought was a cool idea. Because I know the inspiration was the character Brad Pitt played in True Romance. What if we follow that character and he was the star of his own action stoner movie? That's pretty much who James Franco plays in this. Now, him and Seth Rodian have worked before in other movies. They worked on the TV show Freaks and Deeps. Let's see, they did... Uh, this is the End, other movies. I know Seth Rodian has said he will never work with James Franco again because of the allegations sexual allegations i'm saying they're going well did he do it did he not do it i mean is he innocent is he guilty do you not know this or do you just go to save your ass i mean for me it's innocent until proven guilty but you can't say that because that's awful so i don't know that's why i say i don't know the now the film itself I think it's a fun movie. I think it's an entertaining film. Good cast. Seth Rodian. He plays the same guy over and over again. That's kind of one of the reasons why I like to observe and report quite a bit. Because it seems like he played a, a bit of a different, angrier character. That was still rather funny. But usually it's kind of the same type of shtick. I've enjoyed him and other stuff. Neighbors, the first one, I had a lot of fun with. Again, and this as well. Doesn't mean I want him to work on a fucking Ninja Turtle movie, which he's doing now. Yep. That's who I think should get to do a Ninja Turtle film. Seth fucking Rodin. Because they're writing it with... I forget who the hell the other guy is. Is it Evan Goldberg? Because they wrote this. I'm sorry, it's not like I watched this film and go, Yep. I hope they write a Ninja Turtle film. But it's fucking Hollywood, of course. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. Again, I like the film. That doesn't mean... Now, I do think they could have excluded the opening of this film, which is in black and white in the 1930s, where Bill Hader is working with the military, testing this weed, and saying all this crazy stuff, and mimicking a blowjob, and then James Remar who's been warriors from back in the day, been a lot of other stuff. He was the bad guy in 48 hours. This weed is now illegal. You didn't need any of that. I don't think it was that funny. It has nothing to do with the later parts of the film. Nothing ever comes back. It's not like those characters come back, or that part of the story comes back, or is it something to do with the military? Is it something to do with the 
legality of weed, nothing. It's just completely like its own separate film, and it could be excluded. And like if I watch it, I just fast forward through it. I didn't this time to watch all it, but yeah, to cut some running time, that whole opening could have been cut out. Nothing to do with the story, nothing to do with the plot, nothing to do with these characters. There's no relation to these characters. It's just its own separate random thing that it just wasn't needed. Then we get into Seth Rodin. He's a process server, his creative ways to serve papers to people. He has an 18 year old girlfriend, Amber Heard. I'm like, oh, so that's why she plays a bitch so well. Fucking Amber Heard. I'm like, this girl fam looks familiar. She's pretty bitchy. Oh, is Amber Heard? I guess my answer has been validated. She plays bitch well. Now, Seth Rode, there are some funny bits of the writing. Like when he, Seth Rodin sees his girlfriend and other people, or well, really this other teacher's fucked with them. And he's like, I'm not a stupid, so I can say whatever the fuck I want, you chimp looking fucking bastard. And they're having an argument. Or he does work very well with James Franco. Like James Franco, I, I do like as an actor. I thought he did a good job in Your Highness. Your Highness, I think, is an underrated comedy. I think it's a fun film. I don't get the hate for it. I really don't. It's like a, the Sword and the Sorcerer, those 80s violent practical effect Sword and Sorcerer movies, but with a weed, you know, comedy aspect or mentality. And James Franco did a good job in The Disaster Artist. It's funny, all this stuff came out when that came out, and there was talks of him getting an Oscar. But then when those talks came out, that was no longer the case. I'm like, well, that's strange. Why didn't people do this two years or four years before? But hey, what do I know? Again, I don't know. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not. But I do think James Franco did a good job as the drug dealer here. Uh, he's def I think he's even funnier than Seth Rogen in this. Because the way James Franco plays it, he's committed to it. Like he's trying to sell his weed. You know, if this had a baby, and then if this had a baby, and if those two babies met, and they fucked, this would be the shit. Idea yeah, he's committed to this role. He's fully committed. Or like Seth Rogen goes, what the fuck is this thing? Oh, it's a cross joint. You lit these, and you lit this. It all converges. The two have really good energy and chemistry with each other. And so the plot is that Seth Rodin has to serve these papers to another place. He witnesses a murder. He gets out. He threw his joint out. The bad guy's Derry Cole. I remember him the most from Office Space. At Office Space, he was the boss. He's like, hmm, yeah... I'm going to have to have you come in on Saturday and, um, uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to have to, you don't have to come in on Sunday as well. Yeah. Because of, yeah. Good actors. Nice to see him as the villain. He, he's fun. Also working with the bad guy is Rosie Perez. Rosie Perez. Well, I think it was in Birds of Prey, the Harley Quinn movie that came out. I already forgot that movie. But she I remember the most from White Men Can't Jump. She's here as a bad cop. Worked with Gary Cole. And then they send two hitmen. One of them is Craig Robinson. And Craig Robinson, you've seen quite a bit of stuff. He was in This Is The End. He was in a couple of Kevin Smith films. I think he was the judge in Jay and Silent Bob Reboot. Because I can barely remember that fucking film. And pretty much these two have to be on the run. And pretty much they're little adventures. Whether they're in the woods. How, you know, you think they could find us? I don't know. Heat seeking missiles. Foxes. Are you fucking stupid? What are you talking about? Uh, they go to Danny McBride. 
who was the star of Your Highness, and Danny McBride has worked with these guys a lot. This is the end as well, which I, I think that's a fun movie. And Danny McBride, he's in, he's entertaining as a guy who turns on his friends and they get into a fun fight. But then he changes his ways later on. I'm more chill than you. Oh yeah? Yeah, fuck you! Slamming each other. Slamming them into the bathroom. Breaking the toilet. Time out, time out! Okay, time in! And then the fight continues. I, I'm not going to go through exact parts of the fight. But like I said, the energy between these actors. You tell that they've worked together before. They're comfortable working with each other. They're comfortable interacting with each other. That comfort creates a, a certain amount of camaraderie, a certain amount of chemistry with each other. That is what makes the film work the best. Because the story is whatever. The story, see a murder, you're being chased. There, there's nothing that creative in the story. Although there are clever moments. What I mean by clever moments, for example... Even the bit where when Seth Rogen is fighting Gary Cole and Seth Rogen has a weapon and tries to hit it and accidentally smashes on something. Oh, shit. <laughs> and then Gary Cole smashes it on him. Or... See, I don't know how many people have seen this film, so I don't know if I want to give everything away. So maybe I won't give everything away. Because I, I have a tendency to do that. But yeah, the, the movie, it does have some decent action bits. In particular, the finale, there's some decent gory moments. Someone's ear is falling off, like it's been shot off, and they're trying to put the piece back together on it. One person, a dead body, gets their fucking foot blown off. Like the top half gets blown off. Someone gets blasted back and you see the remains. And it's very like burnt up, crusted. It looks like ew, ghastly. And there's also appearances from other people. Ed Bedley Jr., who I remember from Transylvania 65000. With Jeff Goldblum. He plays Amber Heard's dad. Uh, there's also these Korean people going after Derry Cole. And because Derry Cole and them have a battle with each other. Two of them. One is Ken Jeon, Who would be most famous for the Hanover movies. And the other is Bobby Lee. As I recognize that's Bobby Lee. Bobby Lee was on Mad TV. He had bit roles in movies like Harold Kumar go to White Castle. He has a podcast on YouTube called Tiger Belly Video Podcast. Funny. Very funny guy. Has no lines of dialogue in this movie. I think one time he talked about it and I want to say it might have been he rubbed someone the wrong way like Judd Apatow maybe or someone else. And then either they cut his lines or they limited his lines. Which I thought was rather shitty business. Just like... It's just, they were... Even Ken Jeong, like, they were wasted. They're nothing roles. Oh, Ken Jeong has a few lines where he's Asian. So he's talking like this and he's talking stilted. Fuck you, motherfucker. I mean... I, yeah, I like Bobby Lee more than Ken Jeong, and Bobby Lee, again, just listen to this podcast, he's a lot funnier than a lot of people out there, and I think that's a guy that has an untapped potential, movie-wise, that no one really, he screwed up from time to time, too, to be fair, but, I, I'm just, it's, Ken Jeong and Bobby Lee are wasted, and nothing rolls. There's a bit of action. There's a car chase that's interesting because James Franco's driving and he tries to kick out the window, like the windshield, like we see in a lot of action movies, but he gets his foot stuck. So he's driving while his foot is fucking stuck in the windshield. Uh, you get some firefights. Some explosions. Cars landing on people. 
I mean, decently violent. It's R-rated for a reason. Although there is an unrated version as well. I don't know what the bid difference is. I think also with the comedy, they don't go into a lot of dick and fart jokes. It's more about the situation at hand and the way the characters are interacting with the more and more outrageousness of the situation and how they're trying to work with each other to get over the situation. And also you really see these two becoming more and more friends. Because you tell at the beginning, Seth Rogen just thinks of James Franco as his drug dealer. But as it goes on, they really form a friendship. Which seemed like was the case in real life. And that's why, again, it's kind of upsetting where... I mean, if James Franco did what he did, I can understand. But does he know that for certain? Because a lot of times you have people, like, they throw people under the bus just for... Because I've said, Seth Rogen once is writing this new Ninja Turtle movie. Not that he should, with his buddies. Well, I better disassociate myself with James Franco, otherwise I might get fired from that movie. So I, it's all... That's another topic, I guess. But yeah, I thought this was a funny film. And that's the thing we were reviewing a comedy. At the end of the day, is this film funny or is this film not funny? I thought it was funny. I've seen this quite a few times. I still laughed at quite a bit of stuff. Especially James Franco's performance. The way he says certain lines of dialogue. I, again, I know it was directed by David, David Gordon Green. David Gordon Green. He directed Your Highness, which I enjoyed. But apparently everyone hates that film. Except me and a guy from New York. A buddy of mine in New York named Efri. Well, like the two only people that liked Your Highness. Even the people who made the film don't, don't like it. Which, yeah, I don't get what the big deal is. And then one on the same director of this. I know I keep showing the film, I know. Just, uh, it's a bad habit. Guy who directed this would go on to direct the new Halloween film. And now the, the sequel. Halloween Kills. It's a dumb fucking title. Halloween 2018. Which was a fucking pointless redundancy. That's what Halloween 2018, redundant. It was an example of redundancy. Just, have you, you remember this shit? We don't do it again. You remember that? We do this again. You remember that? We do this again. Fucking shit, shading fuck. It's funny, I know Mike OCP saw that. He didn't like the film, but he didn't like the film. <laughs> he, he didn't give a shit so much, he didn't review it. <laughs> So that means if he does, he'll have to watch it again. <laughs> See, Michael OCB, you should have... Now, if he, that ever comes up, you don't have to watch it again to remember the shit. Because it's fucking forgettable. Because I'm sorry, this director doesn't work with horror. At least he didn't with... how. This is another tangent. But yeah, I... Think this is a funny movie. I like the cast. I think these three worked really well together. Danny McBride, James Franco, and Seth Rogen. I mean, if you're not a fan of Seth Rogen, I don't know how you would feel about the film. I don't know if it would change your mind. Again, I'm indifferent on Seth Rogen. Sometimes I like him in Neighbors or this film. Other times I'm like, whatever, dude. Same shtick. So, I, it helps with the people around him. I, I do think that's the thing with Seth Rogen. It deals with either the script, which I think Observer Report helped, or the camaraderie he has surrounding him. I think that is a big, strong point. Because on the flip side, I did not like Sausage Party. I, I thought that film sucked. I thought that film, yeah, it was juvenile. Which is funny, because all the jokes in that movie, I'm like... <laughs> Now you're prim and proper Seth Rogen. Just watch 10 minutes of fucking Sausage Party. I just, if you like that film, that's cool. That 
that was a film that wasn't my cup of tea. See, that's a comedy that I didn't laugh at. That's a comedy I didn't find funny. That's a comedy that I thought was lame and uh, so that I would never care to watch again. This I would. This I would. And like I say, it was cool to see a weed stoner movie mixed in with an action film. It's not, it's not normal. That's not typical. So that was a fun, different, unique combination. Because it does become an action film at the end. Big warehouse, explosion, firefights, gunfights, all the, you know, fist fights, and uh, that helps as well. But yeah, I know. Just to repeat myself, the beginning you didn't need the whole beginning. That five minutes or so could be been easily cut out. But yet, yeah, still enjoyable after all these years. Didn't see in the theater. I think I saw it rented on DVD. I think I was working at the video store at the time. And rented it. Because you could rent stuff for free if you worked there. And got a lot of chuckles out of it. Still did. With that said. Thanks for watching. Take care. And we'll see you guys later. Bye bye.